to the LCS Lounge. <laughs> what? That is, that's why we need clothes on it. It's terrifying. It's, it's, it's so bright and white that it like blends in. What's weirder, having an empty chair or having the mannequin in the chair? Naked mannequin's weirder. Because yeah, Raz is at the computer today. Is is weirder. Yeah, that thing has to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm just looking at it from here. <laughs> You're going to make an executive decision. <laughs> Are you yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. See, it's fun to throw, though. Yeah, um, that's wow. what we got it. Two I'm weeks glad. in a row you've killed Ovily. Yeah. That's just, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that's just too much. All right, we're going to start with a bit from socials, apparently. Yeah, the I producers told us we is. have something. Yes. Jat's sideburns are I at very different comment. heights. Oh, what is this? Joshua Leesman responding. Yeah, Thank I you don't... for coming to my defense. This is fake chat, by the way. <laughs> what is this? I was, so uh, I, I guess this was during our like post week thing, and someone said my sideburns were different heights, and I. So is that's this one space side. Uh -huh. thing? And then that's the. I think they're the same. I don't know. Oh, we so need a ruler for this, this one. This is a week later too. You probably cleaned them up. I did shave this morning, and. So... We gotta clothes. go back to the, the clip yeah. that inspired that we'll comment. Have to find well, the it. guy said that each one comes down in the middle of his ear, which I agreed with, but maybe my ears are different heights. I don't know. Maybe you stand funny. You yeah, a, maybe I was like lean. tilted. Yeah. I feel like everyone's ears are slightly different heights, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I think they look all right, but maybe, maybe not. All right, patch 13.4. <laughs> Bang! Transition. <laughs> anyway. <Yeah>, right? <laughs> Moving on, uh, what are you guys most excited about for the changes that came through in this patch? Oh, baby, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. I think for me, hopping right into the jungle for a team that I'm excited about, 100 Thieves. Closer, yep. Diego, we saw it already being played a little bit more in some yep. of the Eastern leagues. Uh, I'm excited to see him probably bust that one out, as well as uh, Lee Sing coming back in the meta. I think it's just going to be a slightly more interesting jungle meta coming in with some of the tanks getting hit again, uh, like Maokai and whatnot. Yeah, for me, it sounds lame, but I know that there's a lot of old school LCS mid laners that are going to play Orianna. <laughs> Orianna is this weird pick where everyone's so disincentivized from playing it in solo queue because she's just like a slow champion. But if the game slows down enough, it becomes really strong. So like, we're going to see this pick in playoffs. And the people that are good at it are the people that have like years of pro experience because that's really the only time you get true Oriana practice is like on stage. You can't in solo queue, you can't in scrims because people limit test way too much. But if you're really good at Oriana, you can crush with it on stage. So that's feel, that's what I want to see. I was kind of surprised we didn't see her already, to be honest. She hasn't played it like once yeah, or twice. It's just Jensen. What's the um, concern about Azir? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so Azir is kind of a buff and not a nerf. Sure. A bit. Like, it's not going to take him out of the meta whatsoever. He's also really bad. So, like, I, I was checking. <laughs> Win rate wise, you mean. Yeah, I was literally checking yeah. last patch on Lawlytics and, like, 110 games, he had, like, a 33% win rate, which was so low. So, for pro, though? For pro. I don't think, really. Yeah, in pro. Yeah, it was I like think. 100 he's... games, and I was like, you're on a computer, Raz. Yeah. Oh. You want to check? check? Oh, for. I guess. He's, he's in the game. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Right, I'm not distracting. I'm no, not no, distracting. no, no, no. You are distracting. <laughs> Uh, so I will say, like, okay. he's one of those champs, too, that, like, because his early game landing phase is quite good, you know, you can bully a lot of people out, he probably feels better than he might be. Because uh, in team fights, yeah. um, you do have to position quite well and have high uptime in order to get, get a lot of value or have an insane combo like Jensen did. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's not that many games sometimes. Yeah, I think the Sand Soldier's nerf specifically is quite big. Um, I think the nerfs are good enough for maybe not to take him out completely because I think it, his actual team fighting is what you are picking him for. Mm -hmm. um, but people will often look towards the buff that Oriana got and try and pick her more frequently. That's where I would say. The, the, the hole that um, Azir fits is something that Oriana can pretty much, after the buff, can hit right now. Yeah, on patch 13-3, on Games of Legends, 149 games, 38% win rate. Pog. It's like wow. for champs that are played that much, it's like the lowest you'll find. Yeah, I think uh, the, the mid lane... Control mage pool being Victor, Ori, maybe Cassio comes back in. Yeah. Ari with these buffs can also be a bit of a counter to some, can complain to some of these matchups. Like, I think the mid lane pool will shift a little bit, but not actually fundamentally change where suddenly it's like 80 assassins, because there's obviously nothing in the patch that's going to change I that. Think bot lane got buffed too. Like, well, the, the tank bot lane. Well, yeah, exactly. But it's not like basically you just got more regen on the tank relic items. Yeah. Which. It's just a bot lane buff. It's like it's not like if it's to take enchanters out, maybe that makes eighty carries a little bit weaker, but it still puts the power to stay in bot lane. So I don't think we're gonna see a shift of bot lane priority at all in this patch. I also think Seda is gonna be really strong. 
Like, I know people are already like, what's going to break Lucian Nami, uh, Zeri Lulu? I think it actually could be Senna returning. I think Sunday Lanes can be really good. I don't think anything's breaking that up. It's yeah, been how long the the There's got to be something, LCK's man. Still spamming I'm, it. I'm, yeah, them, I'm dying. Zary, Lulu. I'm dying. Zary, Lulu. Them, and it's not, it's not even as bad here as it is in the LCK. Um, all right. Aurelian Soul is available. I'm a little nervous. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Raz is going to explain to us what is new about A Soul. Well, the fun fact is there's a lot. And I think this is a different champion than most in which it's gonna be a bit of word vomit on how his actual stacking on Stardust works. So okay. for now, I'll I'll kind of backseat the Stardust till afterwards. I'll hit on the small point, point of the mechanic. There's a reason why I haven't leveled this up completely. It's because his Q right now, if you were to see it, as you can see, it's a three second uh, uptime. So but if you were to max it, then it's up until basically you run out of mana. Right, so <laughs> it's really Woo! important to be able to get the level nine spike on your Q. A uh, few things to make note of is that you get a reset on your Q when you're in movement on flight. So there's this, and you wanna chase them down, you do this. Obviously, if you just try and do this, there's like a two second cooldown, to, you're kind of locked out of it to get back into it if you're just standing still. So you either go flight to chase someone down, or if you're kiting back. So that's one win. Fade away. So there's that one as a positive. Another one, just specifically how uh, he's gonna be working well and competitive is if I were to put a few goons in the bush, you have vision of them. So his Q and E gives vision, both of them individually give vision in the bush. Obviously you have to get uncomfortably close or if there's a trap set up on you, you are still in danger, but it's nice to be able to get vision like that. Yeah, how Another far away can you get vision? Like what's the furthest scouting skill? So the funny thing is on levels, his Q increases in range. Yeah. Mm. So once you get up to like level 16, stuff like that, you can go pretty far, but this is, I would say okay. level 12. Yeah. So that's a positive. Um, his combos in team fights, which is the most important one, you kind of play a little weird in how you uh, situate in team fights. So like, let's just rank everything up. Uh, I know the goons are in this bush. I'm gonna do this. W, E, R, Q. Dude, like e is your singularity. Kind of, oh it's like a gravity push. So you, it's a slow if they're trying to get out of it. You go faster when you're towards it. So you try and keep them in place while you're alting them because that the meteor takes some time. Get the hell away from me. Um, <laughs> <he's> angry, what? <laughs> and a fun fact about Singularity, Singularity is really important. So not only does it have a 5% execute on a, on a target, so if you actually get them to a low enough portion, then your 5% execute, execute works on these champions. It is also your primary way of stacking Stardust. So your Stardust passive, which gives you a larger, once you stack it infinitely, by the way, the execute on E increases per Stardust. So a good benchmark is 100 Stardust, you'll probably have about 7% um, okay. execute. Mm -hmm. If you have 200, then you're probably going to be having, actually I know I've done 250, which is an 11% execute. That's percentage health target uh, execute. So that's huge. Okay. Um, so that's another one. Uh, you are expected to, I actually pretty much did all of it. I think I'll just show you a cute few. What, what does the Stardust do to your ulti? Because I see that little bar on the ulti is like part Oh, it increases down. the radius of your ulti. So it increases to a ridiculous degree. Same with your E. This increases to a larger degree per Stardust stacking. But do you do you spend it or is it like- No, you continuously- Once it's big, it's big forever? Yeah, that's why it continuously stacks. The one thing that's really important to take note of is you need 75 Stardust for your ulti to be enhanced. Yeah. But okay. the thing that's important is that it only unlocks, it only starts stacking on your ulti specifically once you have it activated. So usually you'll have 30 Stardust uh -huh. by level six. So then that means you'll have 105 Stardust, something like that, to have access to your enhanced ulti. Um, few things that are actually quite cute is I have Dragon Up. If you are late enough, late enough in the game where you can do this, like you can just literally <laughs> solo Dragon. Oh my Dragon God. on Dragon Amazing. Violet. Amazing. Yes, and it does get confused. So even if it were to get here, you can just keep it there. <laughs> uh, small other things too is if you are strong enough once again, because this works, you're using your camps um, to stack Stardust. You can just do this nonsense. If, this is That's if you have enough damage. Now. This is if you have enough damage. Oh wow! So like things like that. So even this is just basic stuff that I'm kind of showcasing. But Stardust is really important. I said that you can get to. Uh, you're expected to kind of get to. 10 Stardust per minute. Yeah. Um, so the basic way, laning is really hard. You're a really weak champion, mm. but you're trying to basically use your E as singularity, 
as an execute for the minion. So you're trying to get the minions low enough so you can use E as an execute. That's the only way in which you can actually start stack Stardust for minions. Otherwise, Q stacking on champions, if you per second, if you're queuing a champion, yeah. then that's one Stardust. Um, if you execute a cannon minion with your, with your singularity, that's three Stardust. So it's like, there are wow. different ways in which you can stack that's important. If you kill a champion in your E, that's five Stardust. So it's like some, some of those things that you have to keep track of as the game goes on. Do you think we'll see it? No. Yeah, <laughs> damn! No, sorry. So, so why? So it's really difficult. The, it should be played because it is a really strong scaling champion where you're 20 minutes into the game and you're a demon. And those core items that you look at, Rod of Ages, uh, Rallies, and um, Man... Mer uh, which one is again? Which, the Seraphs? mana stacking? Seraphs. Seraphs, you're incredibly strong once you get them all stacked, but in lane you're weak to just about every champion. I've seen champions like Syndra, um, Azir, Victor kind of bully him. Yeah. So that's a problem. And you don't have any prio. Your 2v2s, I'm pretty sure, are pretty poor. But once you, if the team lets you stack, if your team gives you the space, uh, you're great. But usually in competitives, champions like that. Even if you have a great window for a Vagar um, or a Karthus or something like that, they generally don't pick them. But I think he should be picked. Hmm. Just because of laning and like loss of prio. Yeah, I think that's mostly why. But I think he's really good. And if there is a, a player that, if he's like that strong, I would be surprised. I should have asked teams if they're actually scrimming. <laughs> 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 but um, I think he should get played. All right, cool. Next on the list, mm -hmm. I am going to the LPL, but I promise there's a point. Uh-oh. Uh, so I <laughs> yeah. saw something cool that I want to see come to LCS. And at the end of this, I want you guys to tell me what team you think would actually risk this. So we're going to talk about lean swaps. And you might be asking why, Emily. Lean swaps actually suck ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty true, with the exception of Scion. So this was actually tried first in the LPL with IG JDG. Uh, YS Cam kind of messed it up because he wasn't able to do the two camp clear on Cyan, which is actually really, really important. Um, but here we see that RNG are going to be setting up for a lane swap. So Ming as Ash support is actually going to invade the least here. We already have Zeri headed up to topside. And then most importantly, Breathe on the Scion is already here. So we'll play this out and I might speed it up a bit because it gets a little boring here until they actually manage to. So they're gonna end up killing Beichuan up here already. And meanwhile, I can't uh, I can't max it because it's not the mini map, unfortunately. But Scion is down here. Um, he's gonna end up clearing birds first, then goes to red, ends up getting executed, um, and then is able to go back and go to bot lane with the advantages that he has sets up um, bot lane in the, in the actual lane swap to do really well. And the thing I really wanted to point out here at the end of this, they're actually up 800 gold. At, in like a few seconds after this, I believe they're up a full 1K off of this swap. Um, so I wanted to point it out because I think it's pretty cool that you can do this with Scion. Uh, it's really important that you get the two camp clear. I actually recommend if anyone wants to do this in their solo queue games, uh, Molecule Lol on Twitter yeah. did a really good YouTube video about like how, how you should do it. Um, but this is something really cool I saw in the LPL. We've seen Scion lane swaps here before. Yep. Who who would take the risk? Cloud9. Yep, I was in about like to. Like a game five, maybe? Yeah, instantly. Like that. <laughs> were, hmm. were they the last team to play? <laughs> I think so. Still have like, nightmares. <laughs> uh, but so specifically, this is something that ends up happening at least back in the day like every playoff someone would like do it in scrims and like remind you that it exists yeah mm -hmm. uh and i like it but if too many teams start doing it i do think there's like a pretty easy way to stop it yep so like in the example you just showed if you just death stack a bush you'll probably get a kill because anytime a team wants to run the Scion strat, it's a three quadrant play. Like yep. the Scion takes the camps from your jungler and your jungler can take their camps or something along those lines. That point, they got the first blood, which was like 600 of the yep. 800 gold advantage. So I do like it, but 
as soon as you do it once, it's like doomed. <laughs> and even in this, I will say, uh, what ends up happening is they try to do another dive top to continue to get their bot lane ahead, yeah. and they actually end up TPing the, the Trist in, and she gets a kill back. So it's like, it didn't yeah. exactly work out super, super well. I think it always depends on execution, but I'd be curious to see it. I think it's just really good for people to have it as a play in their back pocket, because mm -hmm. a lot of the times that you want to do it too is depending on what you're playing into. Like, if you're playing the Siren side and they have like some hyperscaling top laner, and you can both starve them of gold, like the Siren's yeah. going to perform better. Usually Siren is better at clearing under turret, because even if you kill him, he just starts hitting the minions yep. again. Um, you can also be true for bot lanes if they have like a hyperscaling, or if you have a hyperscaling bot lane, you can put them in like this safe side where you can just like isolate them. There's a lot of reasons to do it, especially in best of five series to that yep. point. Like yeah. you just have <laughs> yep. this curveball ready to go when you see the, like, all the stars align and you're like, this is the time to do it. It's not... I, I, like you can do it in the best yeah. of one, it's cool, but like uh, it's more important to just have it ready to go. It's also a massive risk, because if you end up messing it up, not going to look so good. All right, let's see the schedule for today to see who is playing. FlyQuest CLG up first, followed by TSM Evil Geniuses, 100 Thieves versus Cloud9, Golden Guardians versus Team Liquid Honda, and to round it out, Dignitas versus Immortals. Progress. Banger game at the end of the game. Let's go. You guys thought it was crazy yesterday, or at the end of last week when I said that was the game I'm most looking forward to. It still is on this whole day. I know you, Matt Raz is mean mugging me right now, but I swear to God, Tell me why. <laughs> because I really think Look at those standings, Tomo, that's why. Yeah. With Tomo stumping in, I think this team can actually leapfrog over Immortals. After, okay. after people have been talking about how dead Dignitas was for the entire first half of the round robin, you know, like, this is their chance to start making some noise a little bit. I like one in the second half. They if can they do win. it. If they go, yeah. 66% winner. Three and team. six, they, they might be Immortals, who knows? Yeah, for me, it would probably be 100 Thieves and Cloud9, or even Golden Guardians versus Team Liquid, Honda. Mm -hmm. Like, those two games, I can easily see. I'm just, it's just the waiting room for me to see 100 Thieves and Team Liquid really turn it on. Those are the two teams that we have high expectations for because of the names that are on those uh, squads and the expectations they put on each other, but they're just on that slide, and you expect Especially with how 100 Thieves played versus FlyQuest until they lost. They were winning until they lost. You're like, okay, at some point, they're, gonna, <laughs> they're going to have uh, better luck on stage and also a better way in which they can perform in team fights. Both those teams. The, both those teams are bad team fighting teams. So it's very clear going into this week that that was something they need to work on, and I wanted to see what the actual results are. Yeah, we actually have a, apparently a tweet from ThinkCard that shows the last oh. five, but, stand but standings, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So it would be Golden, Golden Guardians, CLG, and FlyQuest, and C9, all tied at second, EG at three and two, TSM at two and three, and then TL, 100T, and Dig all tied at one and four, and then IMT at 05. Again, this is the standings of the LCS if you're only including the last five games. Makes you think, CLG coach. <laughs> Former Golden Guardians coach. Oh. <laughs> you literally have both of those teams. That's hilarious. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, works well in their favor considering they were 0 4 for True. CLG right before that yeah. break point, as well as like, what's strength yeah. of schedule? I've never heard of that. Let's just, but uh, it is true. It's interesting to see that TL and 100 Thieves are struggling so much despite being much ahead of Dig and Immortals in the standings. They're, they're not playing that much better in the recent games. Yeah. That's also cool to pit that against our expectations versus reality, which is the title of our next segment. Wow. What do you know? Uh, we did this at Worlds. We're doing it again with Twitch emotes yeah. based on team expectations versus reality. Raz, you are up first. Yeah, I did mine Let's earlier go. in the week, so I'm interested in what... <laughs> you don't remember what you, you don't did? Remember? You don't remember? Hey, throw it up. I have yeah. reasons for that. All right, so each of us <laughs> is doing one of the matchups from one of the series, one of the games. One of the games today, yeah. Correct. So I'm just interested to throw mine up, see what we have here for TSM versus okay. Evil Geniuses. Oh, okay. Bam. So for Evil Geniuses, Oh, what? We were already good last year. We're bringing on they're FBI cruising. Yeah. and Someday. Like, of course, they're chilling. We somehow kept inspired alongside Jojo Pyun and Vulcan. So, like, they felt like they were good. I Look, I bad habits, all right? Bad habits. TSM, for me, coming into this split, we all had them really low on uh, our power rankings. And so I just felt like, oh, they didn't really make big changes. Yeah. I'm concerned. Bam. And now... <laughs> I'm worried for EG, oh, no. but I'm kind of okay with TSM. I know they're just outside of the hunt for the playoffs, but I'm like, I like the process for TSM. They're winning team fights a lot of times. Uh, Boogie was a big surprise, so that's the biggest change from then and now. Uh, and meanwhile, for EG, they're losing games that they shouldn't be, and they're winning games that they were really far behind in. So I'm, I'm just confused and concerned. The, that's a really good yeah. EG reality, I think, because yeah. you're, you're not sure 
that it's bad, but you're watching in a really worried way. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's, like, it's wild. People even forgot about the Golden Guardians game that they had early on in week two. And I was like, you guys shouldn't have won that game. Oh, another <laughs> one is like, oh, you guys shouldn't have won that game either. So they're, they could have been much worse. They actually could have had a negative win-loss ratio if those yeah. games converted right. into losses. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm up next. And I think you are. I have to check. I think we have the same ones. <laughs> I think there's, oh, a, there's yeah. a high chance we both Wow. Did, uh... You have no creativity? Well, I blame the producers. Because we send these all blind. Wow. Yeah. There was some overlap. Maybe there's not, though. I, I might have changed which one I, I selected. Oh! Okay. No, there isn't. Okay. I changed it, I changed it to let's effing go. <laughs> uh, I just it, love that one. Because, like, you see Bjergsen and Double F coming back. The boys are back together. Let's go! You know, you're really hyped. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. And then for me, Cloud9, this is more personal. No one like I wasn't super bought in on Diplex. So it was a monk of hmm as I was trying to see, you know, like, is this a good play? Like getting rid of Jensen, are they still gonna be a title contender without him? Reality wise, we'll take a look. It's copium now, because you are not <laughs> feeling good as a hundred thieves fan. C9 is the same. C9 is what? Still the same. And C9 is still Monka hmm because they so did bench Diplex and they did bring MS okay. and he was one and one in their first game, and I'm still like. Hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> it's for different reasons, but it's the exact same reaction between the two. And then this is just coping because 100 Thieves is one and four, as we just saw in the last five. The goats being together is not working out that well. Closer looks like he's struggling. The rookies are indeed rookies. You know, it's it's not this. You're right, not that. But pumped. the copium yeah. is that Doublelift and Bjergsen had a really bad split on TSM in summer 2020, and then they won the championship. Right. But this isn't to say that you feel doomed, but it's like you're you're hitting the copium to continue to pretend that you're this, but you're not. You're this. Viego's back. Yeah. You know? yeah yo, yeah, Viego. Copium. The copium. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Close your meta. Okay. Who's next? All right, you're Jet. Up. It's me. Nice. Okay, right, what so do we got here? I brought my remote control. Oh, so let what? me huh? pull up. Yeah, yeah, this is new. Oh, this, uh, this let me pull up real? mine. Expectation versus reality for Golden Guardians and TL. Golden Guardians. Yours is what? moving. How is yours animated? What? I mean, you could have asked. How did the producer what? like you better? It's from the control. I decided to hit play. That's why. Uh, and okay. TL is cat jam because you're thinking there are going to be five people playing Korean. Core JJ is just going to be able to lead these new kids, ready to go. I'm worried. We're cruising. Yeah. Like, they don't have to worry about the super team expectations. Don't press the button. Anyway, yeah, don't do it. No! ready for reality? Boom! Uh, yeah. Yeah. Golden Guardians is just completely Giga Chat yeah. at this they point. They're the living They've won <laughs> seven in a row. Even when they were losing, they're like, I wish we could have played the good teams at the start with our full roster. We would have beaten them too. And Team Liquid is, like, just trying to hang on. Like, they play so damn fast. They have no idea what they're doing. You can't steer Scion alt very well. I was like, about to say. This is, this is <laughs> Summit oh, no. Scion Dude, right they, there. They have crashed a lot of those cars. Oh, yeah. That's not a secure drive. Their, their anyway, mid to late game is Emily. just, just oh, okay. perpetually in a ditch. Well, I don't, have oh, anything, I don't have anything as cool. Yeah. Oh, and I got, cool I got one more thing. I got one more thing. If we take a look at the wide wall. So this what? is the longest win streaks of uh, currently active LCS teams. Golden Guardians Ooh. currently active. It's seven games. FlyQuest had a seven game win streak earlier, but to put their recent run into context, it is just as strong as FlyQuest was when they had their seven game win start. Okay, nice. So if they win today, they then would have longest the longest the win streak yep. of the split. Yeah. All right. The win. Emma, All right. Take it away. I feel like FlyQuest is about to play, and they're going to play CLG, so <laughs> I had. Uh, so yeah, Hopium for CLG. I feel like there's a set amount of emotes you can do for CLG just based on their branding, but obviously they're bringing the roster back. You're, you're kind of like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna run it back. We're gonna do super well. Um, FlyQuest, <laughs> I did Pepe laugh because I feel like people were, including you, Jat, actually, I'll call you out. People were, a lot of people put them like first, second, but then others were like, eh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how these players are going to come over, whether they're gonna perform super well. And then reality, yeah, so Nodders is another one of my favorites. So I was just like, yeah, you know what? FlyQuest, we're doing pretty great. Uh, and then CLG is Prage because I, I They're think- They're still hoping. Yeah, they are still hoping. It's a different way. I, I think like, obviously they've done really well to, to that point in, in their past five games. Um, however, I know they would definitely want some of those games they lost back. I feel like they, they felt like they could have had those um, and we're still like a little bit unsure. I just really like Nodder, so I'm glad they uh, I'm glad they animated that one. Oh, they did Nodder's not want to animate me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love Pepe Laugh. He doesn't Pepe, know about yes. that and like the sale. <laughs> right. I forget who didn't put them number one in their power rankings, yeah. but I mean, everyone. It was Pepe like Laugh. a handful of people. Yeah, I didn't Large put them number one.
Uh, yeah. I actually yeah. didn't. I put EG number one. <laughs> what? Yeah. EG one, fly two. I, I think, think you were the you only were one. one of the few. Oh, yeah. I thought it was. I thought on it was this standard. desk. Pepe, I think it was on the dive. Indeed, that... Pepe laugh. Well, Mark is yeah. known for not knowing. <laughs> no, I'm the one who knows now. Twitch chat always spams about yeah. me, but now <laughs> he's I turning it on them. <laughs> one, thing, one thing about FlyQuest is like. We somehow went through a week without calling them the best team in the league because we had other storylines, mm -hmm. but they still 2 0 I think Prince had a 14-0 game, oh, like 14-0-1, yeah. mm. and yeah. then still, I checked if he keeps up his current kills per game, it will actually be the highest kills per game of any player in any split in LCS history. That's wow. insane. They're on an insane pace right now. Last I checked that stat on how many kills like Justin, he has like 20 kills higher than the next like player in the league. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. was before last week. So I actually have, that could be even more. It's because he's a dirty KDA player. There it is. Whoa. He, said it. Not me. <laughs> he just sits back and waits. No, no, no. Uh, he, he's Flip incredible. Uh, it, it's true that we didn't talk about them as much last week because it felt like Golden Guardians, as a team that is not that talked about normally, it was able to rip the entire narrative away from yeah. everyone else and make it about themselves with their insane win streak beating two and three last week. Yeah. And it made you kind of like forget FlyQuest for a little bit. FlyQuest also played slightly weaker opponents. Uh, I think they played like Immortals and yeah. TL or something. I can't, I can't remember exactly. But like they didn't have the toughest strength of schedule. But I think that this weekend they're going to make it about themselves again. Is anyone predicting CLG for today? Ooh. Let's check the uh, theory. Uh, yeah, we've talked about. It, but I had to out it. If they're crazy. It's not a good bet. Let's see. Bang. Bang. No way. Wait, are we all the same except Raz? Raz. What? The believer. You guys Get are mortals. Dig bandwagoners. I am. No, no. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess I'm the only one that's a little different, so I can explain a bit on the IMT point. Um, I just think as a team, sure, Dignitas' most recent performance last week was a little bit positive. Um, IMT, though, I'm on the Bolulu hype chain. I, we haven't gotten a chance yeah. to talk yeah. about him, but we will soon enough. He's somebody that actually enhances jungler's play a lot historically. I've seen him when he was playing with Kire on Fenerbahce on uh, Turkey, and I, Tur the, the Turkish League, and I thought he did well there. And also, like, I still think that they're a good team mechanically they, as well as they can perform in team fights. I'm surprised none of us took the TSM bait on a, on a game because talking yeah. about coming in, Turtles rejoining the roster. Wild Turtle. And the fact that EG has looked so shaky as we've been talking about, this felt like the kind of obvious game for, for an upset, and I'm surprised none of us took it. Yeah, same. I, I was expecting at least one flip. Oh, no. I'll I thought flip right now. Screw it. TSM. Right. There we go. You're going oh, to TSM. My mind. The, all, there's no way all four of us are right, so TSM win this one. Well, all four of us predicted FlyQuest to win the next game, and FlyQuest CLG is next, so we're going to casters. Speaking of other streaks, two ended. Golden Guardians continued, but 100 Thieves and Dignitas both broke their lost streaks. Thieves avoiding the five straight losses. They do get a big win here against TL. They're dead! Oh. Yeah. That's all it takes. The flash for the distortion cast to guarantee it. Eminem, he gets another one. Eminem just danced on their graves. Stick grabs the first kill, but now can someday get anything back? No, he can't. Stick stays right back into the melee, and Golden Guardians. Just kill everybody. Golden Guardians continue their win streak. It is now seven games in a row.
Welcome back to the LCS, everybody. It's time for some week six action here as we're about to kick it off with FlyQuest going up against CLG. FlyQuest, the best set. We haven't been talking about how they're the best team in the league for a week. Well, guess what? They're still the best team in the league, and it's up to CLG to try to take them down. Nice. You talked about it. I did it. <laughs> we're in there, baby. Both of these teams had undefeated weekends last week as well. Uh, yeah. Or weekdays, actually. Thursday, Friday. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. The trap! We, we still got to get used to it, man. It's, it's still going to take uh, a little while. But, yeah, both these teams coming in with some momentum, having two zero weeks last week. And I want to see how much the draft changes on this patch because yeah. FlyQuest have been the most adherent to the previous jungle meta. Spika has played the most Maokai and Amumu in the entire league. Five Maokai, three Amumu games for him. This patch, both of those champions directly nerfed as well as Demonic Embrace clear speed getting nerfed. So pretty big hits there. And I think it does have a big impact on how FlyQuest have had their recipe for success. You know, with this very straightforward team fighting, speakers always on this tank initiation front line yeah. for them. Now you get to have a little bit more fun than the jungle. Lee Sin's popping up, Viego got buffs. Uh, I know that Spika likes playing carry champions, so I'm really hoping so for some fun variation there. The bottom lane, as a desktop, John, isn't going to change too much. Yeah. Uh, as far as the priority here, I still expect Ash, Annie, Caitlyn maybe to show up here. Zarya and Lucian have both been taken off, so uh, that, that trade deal has been denied already. When you see that thing already denied, I put a lot of importance right now on this Caitlyn ban. Uh, if CLG leave that up, they're trying to get something priority back from FlyQuest. Well, that Lucian versus Zeri matchup in bottom lane stale like it's been sitting on the counter for a couple of weeks. So I'm glad to see both them banned away. I'm looking forward to seeing something else happening oh, in the bottom Oh, there lane. she is. But there's so many bans. Five out of six bans in the first phase are focused around that bottom lane, and specifically these marksman-style champions, even though Ash is mostly played as yeah. a support. But Annie is still left up, and that is one of the things FlyQuest is contemplating here. Irelia, the only ban not focused on bottom lane here in the first half, as FlyQuest locks the Annie in. And Annie, of course, is definitely a flex pick right now. Mid or support, the best roles for it currently. I do want to note as well, Aurelian Soul is available. He's around. I think he's still got some weird bugs and stuff. So who knows what happens if he gets locked <laughs> in? <laughs> tell that, tell that pop up. Uh, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Completely right. fine, play the Galaxy Dragon. <laughs> so one thing here that really boosted Ophelios coming back, and I like the hover already from CLG, they're wasting no time, yeah. was that Thresh also got buffs. So people are already starting to play Ophelios um, since uh, the little passive buffs, which weren't, weren't buffs to generic Ophelios power. It is buffs to Aphelios choices here. Okay. Previously, you're always taking lethality on uh, on uh, on Aphelios on the level ups. Now the attack speed is more competitive than it was previously, so you can actually have a choice. If your opponents have a lot of tanks and you want to go attack speed, it is it's you're not turbo inting your build. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by, I... <laughs> by avoiding lethality now, that's that's all really the Aphelios buffs. But uh, what really got him back in are the Thresh buffs, where you always want to have some extra mobility here the lantern so critical for this champion and now thresh has a lot more playmaking got more damage you know q and uh and w feeling quite good so i'm excited to see here uh poom locking that in and the instant response of the zyra khan duo i love when thresh is popular because he's such a skill expressive champion mm. that players can do so many cool things on so is that hey, locked is that maybe, is that insta lock yeah, maybe that's, that's insta locked. locked yes locked first the first game on the patch the first game with them enabled and the star our dragon is here, baby. I love you, Power Fox. I do, I do. Nice pick there, Christian. I'm so happy we don't have to waste any time. We can get right into some Aurelian Soul. Um, super excited to see the matchup versus uh, Annie, since both of these champions do have really big roaming power. Problem is, Annie's gonna have priority roaming early on, yeah. and Aurelian Soul is gonna try and collect as much Stardust, clearing up the waves. Uh, with Q and E as possible. So we'll see about the early levels if Vikla is able to get off some early Annie roams uh, and make some plays, possibly with Spika. So I'm definitely looking at jungle champions next. And we're already starting to whittle down here. Sejuani trying to deny uh, the Sejuani plus uh, melee top lane champion for Dokla. That has been something CLG have gone to over and over. Yep. Really strong start to the season with contracts playing a bunch of Sejuani and Dokla on those carries. And CLG kind of responding with what has become one of the most top lane picks, the Renekton. 
has reared its head again on this patch and will be banned out here. So no generic Renekton for impact. A strong laner with a point and click CC. He just always finds his way back into relevance no matter how many times he ends up getting nerfed. But yeah, they're gonna focus on that. So not explicit jungle focus in the second half of the draft here from CLG. Gwen going to be banned away now too from FlyQuest. So half jungle, half top for both sides. CLG still has to pick their jungler. They still have to pick their top laner. I would guess that they are going to leave top lane for last to try to get counter pick for Dokla. Try to allow him to play yeah. that matchup as aggressively and as comfortably as he wants. If you're saving your counter pick for jungle, that better be some crazy jungle. Yeah, it better be got. wild. It better be <laughs> Skarner. That's so, yeah. That better be some crazy team countering jungle champ. Uh, but there's that least sin that we mentioned as well. Flowers, I feel like everything we lay out that we're dreaming for on this patch. It's coming in. CLG are jumping on it really early. And this is something we have always given credit to CLG as a team, as an organization for, is trying to jump on new patches as quickly as possible and, and utilize them. So contracts Lee Sin. See what he can get done here. You talked about playmaking with Thresh. Yeah. Thresh and Lee Sin are two of the most iconic, well-designed champions that have stood the test of time. Yes, sir. In League of Legends. And they're pairing him with some of the newest in Aurelian Soul. Vylock in here for FlyQuest. Always love that versus Aphelios. Yep. As much uh, a bonus as it is to have Lantern on your team, you're always looking for Annie plus Rakan plus Vi. Turbo hard engage on that Aphelios. Kill him before he's able to dish out the damage, before he's able to stack up the chakrams. Uh, and FlyQuest have very, very clearly pointed at Turbo Hard Engage. We are a yep. dive composition, and they've got Prince with the Zaya, the, the counter dive champion, uh, the one of the safest AD carries that you possibly can draft. So actually really liking the, the FlyQuest side of this one, even though the individual parts of this CLG's draft have so much skill expression in them. And the final part of that CLG draft will be the Olaf there for the top lane. Lord, I hope it's the top lane. I don't want to see no more Lee Sin top. That's just not. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, technically. That's not what I want. They so. can swap them here, baby. They are, <laughs> they are swappable. They are flexible. But Olaf is good into uh, Cassante, so no reason to swap that out. And the only caveat here is that now contracts on the Lee Sin gonna worry about both side lanes there's so there's so many possibilities and and that does raise the stakes as far as that roaming from mid lane yeah. uh, mini game that we that we brought up early between Annie and Aurelian soul so we'll see jungles passing through mid lane to help them push out even just getting a health gank off maybe not not killing the enemy mid laner but a nice chunk of health lane priority and pushing the wave to allow your mid laner to then come with you to affect the rest of the map can provide huge dividends well, we're going to get our first Aurelian Soul game. We're getting Thresh, we're getting Yeehaw. Lee Sin, and we're getting the top team in the league going up against it. FlyQuest versus CLG. I am hoping the game is as good as the draft, man. The camera is on Aurelian Soul, so let's go ahead and talk about them. For those of y'all that missed what was going on during the analyst desk discussion about, I called it the wrong name again. Some, okay, hold on, whatever. You know what? I, I approve of that name. It's fine. Anyway, it's anyway. Whatever we want. Aurelian Soul's abilities all scale off of the passive Stardust. So early on, like Raz was talking about, he's going to want to execute those lane minions, try to build that up and enhance all of the abilities. Breath of Light, that Q is going to get more damage based on how much Stardust he collects. Everything else gets increased range or AoE with the E also getting extra execution threshold as he stacks it up. Yeah, and uh, the biggest thing to me too is in, in tracking the Stardust is Minions when you get to charge up your gone. ultimate, 75 stacks there, and you get the glowing ultimate, turns your 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 meteor, your rock, into yeah. a much bigger rock to have a big old aftershock uh, in the skies descend. And you can make some really big plays if you save that for a dragon fight, for a herald fight. It's, it's kind of like Corky, except that you get to stack it up yourself right. um, and, and you can actually time it yourself. So don't have to play around any of those recharge timers. You can just stack up your Stardust, save your Stardust, save your ultimate for the big objective that you want to have the huge impact on. 
and see if they can actually coordinate that one. Meanwhile, though, Annie still super, super strong, super powerful with, of course, all of the older buffs to the shield. Yeah. Uh, any extra speed. Always a playmaking champ that you're looking to roam from, from mid lane on, and so that's why we're looking at mid jungle duos here as well. I've got a quick quiz for you on Aurelian Soul. All right, what do you got, buddy? Since we're one of the one of the earliest on this new patch, and it hasn't been picked um, yet uh, around, as far as at least Game of Legends as of right now, data uh, hasn't been updated. But when was the last time Aurelian Soul was picked in pro play and for bonus points? Who was it? It had to be who he back like five years ding, ago. Ding, 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 so. you get your bonus points first. Okay, so who he played it, I'm gonna guess back in like ago? 2018. 2019? Damn it, I was close. Pretty was so dang close. close. That's better than I thought I would do if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> Good old who he, LCS Spring 2019, the classic. But uh, Powell Fox is gonna take a spin around on the new version, and you talked about the stacking up. Of course, you're also starting the tier, so. Ooh, gonna be a while. Nice little hook from Poom there in the bottom side. And especially with Annie versus Aurelian Soul here, it's kind of like the oldest, most basic mid laner design with one of the newest, more complicated mid laner designs going head-to-head <laughs> -head here. I think that's pretty fun. I mean, Annie's like one of the most simple champions in all of League of Legends. Yeah. I have an AoE. I have a point and click. My ult is also an AoE. And then Aurelian Soul, you have to read an entire book report. It, yeah. It it's it's funny because, too, uh, even Annie got kind of retro. There yeah. we go. Never we go. We got a gank uh, on top side. Early ghost from Dokla gets out of the range of the Vault Breaker. Will he actually escape, though? Very, very low. Very, very dead. First blood over to FlyQuest. Nice little move here from Spika. He stops off. Uh, skips blue plus Gromp. Easily able to recognize the lane state around you, and they communicate here. No way for Dokla to get out of this one. He's running the, go uh, the ghost alone on top side, so first jungler up there. And with Spika starting bottom side, both of them starting on their reds. He's able to get up there for the first visit. Big dokes in the dirt. And the kill credit going over to the Vi, I actually really like. Meanwhile, though, Contract's coming down bottom side with the Aurelian Soul, the first of the mid laners to roam. And remember, the Astral Flight can take him over the terrain, so now they're ready for the dive, but Boom's taking a lot of damage. Fly Quest 2v4. They're out playing it. They bring down the third man. Hook over the wall, not gonna find much other than a minion as CLG did not have that play out the way they wanted. Yeah, and neither did Vikla with the, the Annie Flash is one of the most important flashes in the game. Being able to get that Flash giant AoE stun off, but Vikla goes for the super thick part of the wall and shorts it. Uh, Face plant. A little unlucky, a little unlucky, but so, hey. They avoided a dive, they avoided a death on a four-man play. Yeah. Feels pretty good there at the start. Contract's going right back in. Prince is the target, but Contract knows he can't just stick around. Prince and Ayla, feeling good. So off of that roam, both mid laners using their teleports. So Powell Fox will now have the early push again. You constantly got to keep checking in on this mid lane priority to, to look at who's going to be first to move. Vikla used the basically Uno reverse card there of the teleport. <laughs> I can follow one of these roams, even if you get there first. Uh, with the early teleport, but does cost a little bit to get shoved in. Powell Fox now with the flash advantage, and the Stardust sitting at 18 right now. We'll have some, uh, some constant check-ins. Yep, he's gonna go ahead, use that Singularity to farm up one melee minion there. Unfortunately, the other two not quite at the threshold there for him. Remember that the W, the Astral Flight for Aurelian Soul does have a pretty long cooldown. It's not your damaging ability, so you're going to level it up very late. So it's going to stick around at like, you know, 25, 26 seconds for a very long time. Yeah, and it, you can only get it shorter if you get a takedown right. while you're going for a big play. So I really like that reward structure for Aurelian Soul. If you go in to combat with your W, you're trying to make a, a, a really big play, then getting the actual takedown can allow you to get out afterwards, getting that partial refresh and majority reset there. I Level just love how he can breathe fire while he flies. He feels <laughs> like a real dragon from like out of Skyrim. Or yeah, it's it's a nice little rework there. The fantasy is well designed. Contract's gonna come over a ward as Annie now level six. Definitely have to be careful about Vikla's combo potential here with Tibbers and they're gonna make a big play off that mid push. Vikla pushed in two waves to the turret, which Aurelian Soul does not want to drop. So nice bit of priority here from FlyQuest turned into an objective. 
Yeah. Nice early Drake before that eight minute mark, which means there's no Herald to be traded for it across on the other end of the map. So FlyQuest are happy to secure themselves a free neutral objective. It means that if they keep on this pace, they'll also be able to try to play from an early Drake soul if CLG can't stop it. Gold's still pretty close overall, but FlyQuest loving the way things are going early on. And for Spika, we were talking about him getting that first blood money. I actually love when Bai gets the first blood money. This champion has such a good build available to her right now, even though the majority of solo queue players are not actually utilizing it. Ayla here is going to have to give up on his control ward hopes for now as contract shows. So what but, is this build then, sir? So the build is Black Cleaver Rush, because it got buffed, super efficient, extra 50 health and five attack damage on it, is a very good rush item um, into the Radiant Virtue. And a lot of people don't like building super tanky like that, but it yeah. is so powerful, especially for pro, uh, and even has a much higher win rate in solo queue if you go that, because then you can just engage to your heart's content and create so much space for your team to follow up, getting a lot of ability haste as well, which by super, super benefits from, yeah. as well as maxing W second. is actually a lot better than E, which a lot of people are still doing the E seconds because your attack speed is so easily proxed when you have so much ability haste and you can just get your E resets there. Yeah. Uh, being able to get those big W procs provides you that neutral objective control, being able to stack up those dragons and control the Rift Herald's like Speak is already doing for Blacklist. Plus, with the W combined with Black Cleaver, it's so much armor shred. And especially when you have an AD carry like Prince that you know you can trust to do the damage like that. Armor Shred will feel fine, but Prince don't even need it. 2v2, FlyQuest get a kill on bot side. Yeah, we got a little quick switch there on the gold graph as yeah. <laughs> Prince racks up the kill, overtakes Luger, and the bottom brush camp, instant death. Nice little drop there by Ayla. Level six on the Rakan now. Did use his Ignite, and CLG trying to make the cross map play. play. Well, unfortunately for CLG, FlyQuest did not commit any extra men to the bot side play. It was a 2v2 fair fight, so FlyQuest still has three guys ready to play around this Herald, potentially try to contest it. Impact's gonna go into the pit first, but Coom has Rome. He is the first bottom laner from either side to make his way into the fight. Speaker's ready to go for it, and FlyQuest steals it away. Now Contract has to flash back over the wall. Vickla's gonna be taken low, and Dopla takes him down. FlyQuest is still fighting, looking for a second one here back in the Contract. Prince has arrived, the dragon flies away, and Poom tries to run it. Can he get out? Luger's ready to back him up as Spika takes a lot of damage, and Impact goes underneath the turret to slay a dragon. FlyQuest, five to one. Flowers, FlyQuest just blew this game wide open. It's nine minutes in, and they that, that's a, a catastrophe for CLG. Yeah. They get annihilated at the Herald. The Herald is also stolen. Uh, as by, you're always looking to go in and ult the enemy jungler and then smite steal away. Speak is able to grab it. They pick up the eyeball on Ayla, so a little bit of the plate money will be shared with the Rakan, but that is completely fine, because look at the aftermath. In the back of the pit, they absolutely annihilate contracts. He gets chunked down to 200 health here. He's forced to flash out, but then goes back in to try and get the kick here. Dies again as well. Impact with the ultimate onto Palafox is able to chase him down with Cassante on the ghost. Chases him for the full tower dive in. FlyQuest with a massive gold lead. Both neutral objectives to start out the game as well. And huge, huge momentum to work with. It's so tough. And there's to your play Black Cleaver the completed. From this point, yeah. Fly has her first. I have 2 0 and 2. 4 out of 5 KP. Black Cleaver done 10 minutes into the game. This is the Vi dream game. Man, you could not ask for a better start than what Speak is doing right here. Certainly is. Certainly is. And if he goes Radiant Virtue afterwards, too, you're so tanky, you can just initiate on this Aphelios over and over and over. You know that Poom and Impact have your back. And the full dive here from FlyQuest must feel so nice. When you get an early lead on a full dive comp, then yeah. all you know is move forward. And then doing just that into the enemy jungle, trying to take away some of this vision trying to take away some of those resources. Man, when you're ahead on the full dive comp, you are the main characters and they are the trash mobs. Your job <laughs> is to farm them up and make sure you just steamroll the rest of the game. Palafox gonna continue trying to farm up, clear out these waves mid. You can see his tier about two thirds of the way stacked here, working up towards having that all the way maximized. But a 3000 gold deficit means stacking up the tier is not going to be enough. CLG are gonna need to find some sort of an angle, some sort of a place somewhere. 15 seconds 
until the next Drake spawns. And I feel like you don't want to take a fight in open ground right now if you're CLG. They're just very far behind. They're going in bottom, looking for another play here. Ayla and Spika trying to stay on top of Luguru have to flash away. And Spika just breaks his jaw. Six to one fly quest. They dropped three wards on that lantern and oh, had yeah. two bodies. So you, you are, are not clicking that lantern. <laughs> and he does drop Tibbert's for a huge chunk in health onto Ballow Fox, but my goodness. Made that lantern look so incredibly useless there. Two bodies, three wards. Rift Hail dropped on the bottom side too. All of the plate money is actually going to go to Rakan because nobody else is around. So Ayla's getting rich. Everybody on FlyQuest is eating well tonight. Um, actually, Zaya there splitting as well. Prince finishes off the turret by himself. Boom and Contracts trying to contest here for the Drake, see if they can find anything. Vikla's gonna rotate over. Remember, he chunked Palafox down earlier. Speaker just taunting him with the white flag. He's saying, get out and of here, fight. man. <laughs> There's just nothing left. It looks like CLG has just completely lost any sort of control here in the game. Right. Impact is <laughs> the ulti? all out to disengage from the Ragnarok to Olaf. Yeah. It just takes Kusante through the wall, gets him away from the Olaf instead. Man, 5,000 gold. Both Drakes, first Herald, so they got everything. Yeah, that's actually the answer to the uh, to the question: What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? The, the immovable move past <laughs> exactly. The immovable object does not move. Ragnarok pop by Olaf gets to stay there. Kisante goes flying. Meanwhile, I just feel like sometimes there's trash talk that's just too real to be funny. You know, the white flag going up right now. Uh, speaker was trying to taunt them is a little too close to home. It's a 5.3k gold lead with two dragons. FlyQuest and Spika know that they have such a massive lead right now. Yeah. You can kick back. <laughs> Lean back in the chair, crank that sucker back. This is looking like just follow the checklist, keep forcing fights on objectives. And what you wanna actually do to increase the pace of the game in this point is to force more mini objectives up yourself. Okay. The jungle camps, are all little mini objectives that you can take away from your opponents. You can see right now, taking away all the vision to make the rotations between those much more difficult for CLG, much more costly, and they just bring everybody up to this outer tower. Oh no, Palafox. That poor little dragon, I don't think he's going much of anywhere. Falling Star isn't gonna do a thing. Spika goes unstoppable. FlyQuest easily pick up the kill. And with turret plating falling, it means they're gonna try to strong arm this turret now as well. Boom and Contracts still just trying to defend. They might be able to kill Tibbers. Contracts down to one third HP. However, the box is deployed. Prince goes up, Prince comes right back down. He's all right. Contracts not quite the same. Has to fall back to the Krugs trying to heal. Prince is gonna get jumped on there, but it's him who ends up walking away with the money. Boom thought he was making a play, but he's just delivering 300 gold into the fly. Quest 80 carries Pac. Yeah, they're getting strong-armed on both sides here. Everybody returning. Spika comes back as well. Look at the 1-3-1. Uh, Impact's gonna finish up on the mid turret by himself, uncontested. Meanwhile, Annie down bottom side is actually facing the Olaf and might get collapsed on here for Dokla, so he's gotta get out of there. The FlyQuest support is currently tied in a mortal battle with the CLG mid laner for who has the most money. That is the current state of the game. I never like saying it this early because we only just saw plates fall a minute ago, but CLG needs a mistake from FlyQuest. They are just way too far ahead. Okay, this is our uh, warm-up game at the beginning of the day here. This is the warm-up <laughs> game. Okay. CLG is looking around like, okay, so warmed up on stage. Let's, yeah, all right. You guys ready to fight FlyQuest? Let's, let's start up the real match. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the practice lobby. This, this was the practice lobby to test out Aurelian Soul, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Testing complete. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I don't know if Aurelian Soul is passing the test. Oh, and they run the coming up next. Oh, TSM. they're already going next. Evil man. Genius's production is, is ready to, to get the day started as well. Well, it's probably going to happen pretty soon based on the current state of the game and the current way things are progressing. Prince has been left up here in the top side to take down the tier one turret. Dokla has his Ravenous Hydra to try to at least clear some of this away. However, with the turret already down, that means Big Dokes has to pop the Ragnarok just to get away from Ayla and Prince, who would have got the kill if he didn't use that. They surely would have. All right, Hopium. Massive Hopium, Copium, okay. PLG. Objective bounties, flowers. 
And I need about seven the, of them. The tears stacking up for that Aurelian soul. Oh, where's our Stardust check-in? Here, that's what we can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stardust, Stardust. check-in, baby. Ooh, charged up ultimate. Okay. Do you know what the charged up ultimate is called? The sky's descent. Nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did I your did homework, homework before, man. baby. I did Prepping up on the new patch. It's a rank two, the sky's descent. And remember, we'll release the big shockwave. Yep. You can steal objective bounties with it as well. You can actually kill epic monsters with the shockwave. So CLG, here we go. This sky's descend is going to need to have an absolutely earth It's gonna have to be as big as the meteor that killed off the dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dragon needs to kill all the dinosaurs if CLG wants any sort of a chance here in this game. Seven and a half thousand gold, the lead for FlyQuest. The next Drake spawning in 25 seconds. Remember, they already secured the first two. Their sole point, if they get this one as well, Contracts goes in after Prince, and he's just immediately down to 1% HP. Impact's coming around, looking to finish him off, and there it is. FlyQuest are not done yet. Ayla has to disengage, but it's a double kill back over to the top laner, as now Impact is keeping everybody here. Vikla goes into the dive underneath the turret, and Spika takes down Aurelian Soul. FlyQuest have killed three. They put the remaining two on life support, and they are even sweating doing it. They can probably pick up about three objectives at the same time. Let's go push mid, push bottom, and pick up dragon. All the same time here for FlyQuest. Only 17 minutes into this game. Flowers, we already got to check in with stats. What's our fastest game of the split? Because this one is cruising for a bruising. FlyQuest are just really good at some League of Legends, man. Let's take another look at this one. It was Contracts trying to jump on Prince here at the start. Yeah, goes in for the kick play here, flashes to try and get it off, but Prince is already in the air. And then look at this blade collar. Jesus, that blade collar. Did about 900 damage, maybe. He then escaped for a little bit off of the lantern, but once the rest of the FlyQuest members get here, BPO Impact is able to jump into the middle. It doesn't matter. Here comes the Sky's Descent. Does hit a nice little cool. shockwave here, but that's, uh, that's going to be about it. Looks kind of cool. It looked really cool, to be honest. I mean, that was that was badass. Unfortunately, it just didn't really do anything because you're down 8,000 gold. They're a little Pretty bit difficult. far behind. Yeah. Yeah, their, their backs are against the wall, man. 12 to 1. The single kill that they managed to get for CLG was the Olaf kill on the Annie earlier, but there's just not a whole lot for these guys to grab onto. FlyQuest now at sole point, so here in five minutes, they'll be able to take another massive power spike unless CLG can find some sort of a miracle and stop it. Tier two turret here on the bottom lane, just about to fall as well. Remember, these ones are worth a okay. ton of gold. Here's some more Hopium. There's okay. no teleport on impact. So if CLG forced right now, if they brought all five members, they could force a 5v4. Well, I'm still not quite sure if they're gonna win that one because Vikla goes into stasis and they kill the two divers while it happens. Two and a half seconds is two and a half too much. And FlyQuest immediately punished CLG. They'll take the turret in the process. They are 10,000 gold ahead. When they force a 5v4, they actually still had their DPS a little bit far away. Uh, Luger was not quite in range to instantly follow up. You need both the numbers advantage plus the positioning to actually yep. be able to pull off the huge comeback play that you need when you're down over 10,000 gold. So that one quickly gets turned around. You saw how quickly the front line got annihilated there. Even though Dokla charges in with contracts, they just get the elite. Observers, if we could, can I look at the gold real quick here? I just wanted to see something. Thank you very much. Impact has 8,500 gold and the lead is 10,000. So even though it was a 5v4, FlyQuest was still fighting with 1,500 more golds worth of power in that fight. That's how you know times are tough. Baron is alive, spawned just 15 seconds ago, and FlyQuest knows they are so far ahead in this game, they can just secure the top side of the enemy jungle, put down all the vision, sweep out anything that might be remaining. All you need is one single pick, and you just take Baron in the game. Yeah, I mean, FlyQuest have done this so far for the entirety of the season. The one little blip on the radar, that one loss to TSM, the upset, but as soon as that happened to them, they just refocused and they picked up right where they left off, kind of running the LCS. CLG fishing around. If they could get a dream steal here. It's gotta be a YOLO play from Contracts, I think. Palafox flying in. 
Burn it down. Go for it. Low. They go in for it. They're going to find it. CLG steals the Baron. FlyQuest thought they left it at enough HP, but Aurelian Soul just burns the thing up. Exactly. I love it. When you have the team so far behind, recognize you only have one hope. Try and get a big objective seal, burn it down. They don't actually sacrifice anyone for it. Big blunder by FlyQuest. We instantly cast or curse them. Yeah, man. And they're, was... <laughs> and they're, they're trying to finish off this game. Uh, and they leave open the Baron at only a few thousand HP. Talfox recognizes it. Dragon, once you max your Q breath, able to hit it over the wall, they burn it down. Contracts just slips right in. Yoinkity yoink, thank you for the leash. And here's another look at, at how they how they got themselves into this situation. All right, they stopped okay. DPS, but uh, it's still leashed here. And so Palfox just burns it right down with the Q. Contracts already landed his own Q. Dokla hits the Q over the wall. Contracts takes his Q in. He smites as he arrives with the Q, and since Palafox's breath is still on it, that finishes it off. Right. The smite took it down to 116 HP, and then it was Palafox's dot plus the Leandries that was able to secure it. So CLG will at least buy themselves a little bit of time there. It makes it harder for FlyQuest to push. It gives CLG a slight foothold, but the deck is very much still stacked against them. Yeah. Just a little bit of lapse in thought, and... I guess that was FlyQuest going full recline super early in this game because of the massive lead. Yeah. They didn't realize until it's too late. You know, they're looking for the turn. Hey, Spica, you're the big initiation. Get over here, engage on them. But then couldn't get back in the pit in time. Oh, nice timing on the ulti from Spica there. He waits just until he's at the edge of the range to guarantee that Ragnarok Annie, is going to wear off, And then dives him as Vikla escapes from Palafox Tomb here on the top side. It's not even <laughs> going to matter, man. He's chilling. He's got Tibbers. Exactly. And he's always got Tibbers in the pocket, turns it back into a 2v2, and then harasses them on their recalls. Can't stop the Aurelian Soul, but it doesn't matter where you are. FlyQuest are running the map. Dragon going to come up in 36 seconds, so they will not over push their hand. They will just pick up their objective. Little bit of safety here since they've given CLG a little bit of a window to come back with that Baron Seal, and they just want to secure it with that Ocean Soul. Make sure you pick up the super high value first before going for anything else. You were talking in draft about wanting to see how this patch would affect Spika's jungle picks, because he played a lot of Maokai, he played a lot of Abumu. His Vi currently has half the kills of FlyQuest. 7-0 and 6, part of 13 out of 15 of the plays that have been made. The only other player with that much kill participation is Ayla's Rakan. And honestly, FlyQuest have just been having an awesome game all around. The Baron, kind of that one big mishap there, underestimating how quickly Aurelian would be able to burn it down. But now FlyQuest are positioning for this final Drake for themselves. CLG, they know they got to try something here. Yes, it's going to be a desperate play. Yes, it's a low percentage option, but it's probably better than the alternative. So they're just going to yeah. go ahead and start this up. And time is not in their favor. So that's why they're the ones forcing here, even though it's very, very dangerous for them. Spika looking for a little bit of a flank here around on the Vi. They're not looking for a smite steal. They want the fight. Boom. Finding the hook. However, now Impact is diving into the remaining players on CLG. FlyQuest keeping focus back on the Drake. As you can see, there comes a big old meteor. The skies descend, but FlyQuest still stands tall. Joker looks for a way into the fight, but he won't be able to find it. How can they get the kill? Impact! Massive damage coming in from the AoE of Aphelios. CLG! They stole the Drake! They win the fight! What in the hell is going on here? As Vickla's gonna be chased down, a double kill for Palafox, and Contract picks up a third. What on earth are CLG eating for breakfast? They are scaling flowers and they get another objective bounty shutdown. They deny the Dragon Soul. They pick up the kills. They get the big shutdown plus another one here looking for the tower. Prince under turret though is still a force to be reckoned with. Bladecaller clears the wave. He calms CLG back down, but that is two. Back to back. Objective must win fights for CLG. Look at it. Impact flanks in while the rest of the team is still walking. So, a little bit of a chunk of damage there. Then, Palfox sets it up. A Soul Ultimate goes down. The Shockwave goes out, softens him up, and Impact stays in one spot there. Gets hooked in. He gets hooked in twice. The back to back death sentence from Boom. And then the big ultimate from Aphelios. Luger annihilates them. With the splash damage, Palfox able to chase down the last little straggling kill there as well, and then Contract's chasing down Vikla, kicks him in with the Q already on his head. 
much needed victories here for CLG. They're pulling it back. We are really just Woo! putting them to the test. Ophelios and Aurelian Soul scaling up into these team fights. Those two did about 10,000 damage between the two of them in the last fight. And even though three players on FlyQuest died, Spika just barely got away. He had about 50 health left, dodged a couple of skill shots there in the pit before flashing out, so it could have gone even worse. FlyQuest are still 7,000 gold ahead, but they previously were almost 11,000 gold ahead. So CLG has managed to dig in and defend their ground for now. They still have all three inhibitor turrets remaining. Let's see how long they can keep it up. Yeah, CLG thanking the stars for that IE second change. <laughs> Having IE on Luger, a big old explosion there. Thanking the stars, thank Freak. Freak's thank out Freak. there. Thank you, Mr. CLG. Freak. Yes. Everybody, every CLG fan, <laughs> thank Mr. Freak right now. Appreciate it, buddy. Uh, Luger as well. Honestly, now we get to see a little bit more competitive setup here. Flyk was still with a massive lead, of course, but they're being forced to be much more concentrated in their efforts. They are the ones with the straightforward big dive comp here, so they still are threatening. Complete vision blackout around Baron, then go to Baron. They just have to be what much more clean with their turn off of it. Can't leave it a, a, around at too low of a health for a steal. Obviously need to pinpoint their turn on the engage as well. So earlier in this game, I made a bit of a sassy comment about how Ayla had more money than Palafox. Palafox has now completed his third major item on Aurelian Soul. He is actually at a greater power point than Vikla is on the Annie. The Banshee's Veil being completed is also going to be great for stopping them from being able to engage on this powerful mid lane here. Yeah, and going to help him so much with, with burning through impact and, and working through Spika as well, this front line. Since Palafox has the Leandri's burn and there's a lot of armor on Spika, only magic resist is in his Radiant Virtue, and Palafox really softening up that front line to allow Luger to really work some magic here. If CLG can protect them and get another Team 5 victory, plus objective bounty shutdown, then they're really cooking, and they could actually turn this one right back around. FlyQuest, though, they want to get back into position, set up that blockade of vision once again around the Baron. It's all about Luger, it's all about Palafox. If these two can get the damage done, they still have a chance. Impact wrapping around the top side here. With Baron up, FlyQuest are once again looking for the angle. Although now, they are very, very aware of just how dangerous Aurelian Soul is. The charm, the damage, the burst! Goodbye to Poom! CLG lose their support, and that's the green light for FlyQuest to head into the Baron pit. Very good pick for FlyQuest. CLG are looking at the cooldowns right now, though. Vi ultimate and Rakan ultimate both used to kill the Thresh. So as far as 4v5s go, they could definitely still look for something with those initiation cooldowns not available. Low health on the Baron, can they steal it again? Impact's just trying to keep everybody else away. The Baron falls, it's secured by Spika. FlyQuest are happy to get this objective this time. They made sure to play it careful enough to not give CLG the opportunity to walk Aurelian Soul and Lee Sin close enough for the steal. Much, much better this time for FlyQuest. Impact is the only one outside. He's playing the bouncer for FlyQuest, keeps all CLG out of that Baron Club. Speak is able to finish it up. No problem for them this time around. Can they repeat on the Dragon Soul? Boom is back on the map. He had back-to-back -back death sentences that allowed CLG to set up the last time they won the Dragon Fight. Can they do it again? Otherwise, FlyQuest gonna walk this one home. Aurelian Soul has 330 Stardust. It's about to be even more if he can successfully farm what he needs on that wave. He's got the Skies Descend ready to go again. CLG are going to be too slow to the objective, however, and that means FlyQuest are going to guarantee themselves a Dragon Soul. Now with a TP coming in, CLG knows they have to try to defend against this FlyQuest offensive, and it looks like they will be able to walk this one out. However, FlyQuest still has Baron for another two minutes, and you know they're going to be pushing. Yep. They certainly are. They don't want to give Aurelian Soul any more time to scale. Remember, this champion does scale infinitely with the Stardust. And he's level 16 now. If, if they can cook up some wave clear here and avoid the dive, then maybe they can buy the time needed. The Vi ultimate is back off cooldown, though. Easier said than done, as now Contracts is already going to get killed, but the skies descend, and Thick will fall oh. immediately. Don't listen to the back line. They run down Prince. They killed the damage, and Palafox is flying into the back lines of FlyQuest. The dragon roars, and FlyQuest dies. 
CLG managed to get their fight and hold on against the FlyQuest offensive. Impact looks to make his way out, but Palafox is having none of it and runs him down. CLG never give up hope, Flowers. Never give up hope. CLG are doing it. They clear another team fight. Gold advantage be damned. They've got a dragon on their team. Holy cow, man. Let's take a look at it. So, contracts will get blown up. Don't let that distract you from the fact that CLG have a massive AOE. Contracts goes in, that is the ultimate from Aurelian Soul, gets all four of them in the center, in the knockup, and they burn down Vikla in the duration. Then Dokla on the tanky Olaf with the Radiant Virtue, plus the Cleaver got massive cleave damage off on the back line forcing Prince back out since he didn't have ultimate either. Burn both the summoner spells, and it's the constant follow-up here and harassment from the dragon off of that charge. Massive, massive stuff from CLG. That was a very aggressive Zaya ultimate from Prince trying to start the fight uh -huh. off to get the initial burst. It got punished by the Aurelian Soul ulti, and that is Prince's first death this game. Certainly was. Stopwatch now purchased in the aftermath. Yeah. So we'll have another option after ultimate. But as I said, both summoners were also used in that, as you say, very aggressive opening to the team fight by Prince. So won't get the heal back, won't get the flashback. They return to the gates of the CLG base though, and they are going to keep on knocking. And the game gets more interesting from here because of the fact that that soul has now been claimed by FlyQuest. It means all the future drakes are going to be elders. And remember, that's just as valuable for CLG. Previously, if you managed to take one of the drakes from FlyQuest, it's just a crappy little ocean dragon. He doesn't really mean a whole lot at this point in the game. If you can get an elder, elder plus Aurelian, you're going to kill him in one burp. <laughs> the Omega Dragon burp, baby. Yeah. Burn them all down with the Leandries too. It's so effective. You can tag everyone with it. You get the double dots. See if they can actually uh, hold here though. COD doing a very good job wave clearing. Aurelian Soul up to level 17 now. Luger, look at that health bar with the massive shields now available. 445 Stardust. 280 carries. 445 Stardust. I'm, the champion hasn't been out long enough for me to be familiar with how Chad that is or not, but it seems pretty Chad. Definitely is. Uh, uh, oh, okay, let's take a cool. look at the execution upgrade on the Singularity. Burst deals an additional 14%. <laughs> okay. Max right. health damage, baby. <laughs> All right. Max health, too. Yeah. Uh, by the way, that ulti looks primed and ready to go again. Nice. And, and Palafax has just dinged 18 as well. So, FlyQuest, they're very trepidatious now after having been rebuffed three times by CLG. I don't know what that word means, but it sounds Cautious, basically just okay. cautious. All right, all right, all right. It's, it's, a, it's a cautious with a little splice of scared. Okay, that's like a, that's like a $10 word. Uh, uh, I'm gonna have to remember that one. See them collapse here though after they push in all the waves. We're getting to the point where that gold lead is gonna start meaning less and less and less as these carries do start to hit close to their end game builds. Palafox on five and a half items just needs to evolve the Oblivion Orb into the Morellonomicon. You can see we're also getting close to Luger's fourth big completed item here. Has the Infinity Edge, has the Bloodthirster. This guy is scary, man. CLG is scary. FlyQuest yeah. knows that they can't just keep running into this stuff. They're going to have to play pretty smart and pretty respectfully. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Spika is, is the only one without a death steal on the team. And it's, it's difficult for him to deal with this dragon since you want to get in there and interrupt the Aurelian soul. But with the Banshees as well, Palfox has remained very, very safe with so much of the attention being focused on burning through, you know, contracts or another yeah. member of the front line here. Luger and Palfox, if left untouched, they will. Here he comes, though. They're going after Luger. Oh, they want to. And Ayla, they just dive bomb into contracts and take him out. Enemy jungler dead for 50 seconds. Baron is live. FlyQuest knew what they were going for there. And critically, this time, they just use the Vi engage. They don't use the Recon engage. They don't use the Annie engage either. So FlyQuest, they still have multiple tools to check CLG, and they know without your jungler, there's no hope in CLG coming over to try for a steal, and they definitely don't want the fight with FlyQuest still having so many abilities that they can turn off the Baron and engage and pick on them. So it's just going to be another Baron picked up for FlyQuest setting up for 
our elder dragon fight that you've been looking for uh, forward to so much, Flowers. This is where it all goes down. Contracts is still dead for another five seconds, so CLG can't even approach at their full strength until he's back online. FlyQuest are gonna be first ones down in the river. They're the ones with control right now. Palafox only needs to breathe a little bit onto that blue buff, just guarantee that he can take the whole thing. That man is going to be very useful in what I'm guessing will probably be a pretty drawn out affair. But FlyQuest are immediately just gonna start up the Drake. Contracts has made his way down here. CLG are ready to try to fight, try to challenge for this. The Elder's still being burned down, but not super quickly. CLG's still looking for the angle. Palafox drops the ulti in the sky's descent. FlyQuest scatter. CLG's still looking to make their fight. In the back line goes a late. Finds multiple knockdowns, multiple CCs. FlyQuest are going in, and they found the kill to Luger. CLG are absolutely crushed as Boom and Contract barely hold on to life. And Impact ready to rip it away from them. Contract tries to use a stopwatch, but the clock ticks ever forward, and time's run out for CLG. FlyQuest finally get their fight. They knew what they were walking into. They knew how to get it done. And after 37 minutes, they're gonna find their win. And they're gonna finish it off with Big Dokes here. Big Dokes trying to cut the minion wave, but there's already members inside the base. He knows it's been lost. They're going to give up the Nexus to his FlyQuest with a much better initiation that time around, Flowers. It was Ayla who got four members yep. locked up in the Rakan combo and that caused Luger to use everything. After Luger uses double summoners out of the Rakan initiation, Spika hits him with the Vi ultimate, and the CLG resistance collapses. Honestly, the game showed off just how dangerous Aurelian Soul can be as a scaling option. Remember that this game was what? 10,000 gold, almost 11,000 gold lead for FlyQuest just 20, 21 minutes into the game. And then CLG manages to steal a Baron. CLG manages to win a couple of team fights. They had no business staying alive in that game as long as they did, but they dug in, they held on. It wasn't enough. That early game, absolutely crushing from FlyQuest. And a quick little reminder not to let Aphelios uh, roam free in your team fights either, <laughs> as they're able to correctly layer some really nice CC, some good engage steps taken by FlyQuest in the last team fight. FlyQuest maintaining their spot at the top of the league. Still only that one loss to TSM that you mentioned. They shook that off, they got right back in. Sometimes you can get caught off guard by a new champion being enabled, something that you haven't actually had stage game against before. I think that this is one of those moments that FlyQuest is gonna remember and be like, okay, we gotta make sure we're not doing those, I'm gonna kill you with Zaya's ulti at the start of the fight moves against Aurelian Soul. <laughs> but honestly, Good effort from CLG, good defense for a game that they were very, very far behind in. But FlyQuest just too good, man. Yeah. I, I like the resilience shown by CLG, as you mentioned. This is never a team to give up. They conceded the unwinnable fight towards objectives towards the end, yeah. and then just tried to pick their moments. They won a few comeback moments, but not enough versus FlyQuest. FlyQuest go up to, what is that now? 11 and one. 11 and one. That's... Whew, that's a lot of ones, because they're number one. Sad like West, top team in the league. Right now, we're going to go ahead and head to a break with that game all wrapped up. But Spika is going to join the lounge to play some Tic Tac Pro. Plus, TSM versus EG is coming up next. Don't go anywhere. Hey, everyone. With the start of March, we've started off Women's History Month. And for us at CLG, with the CLG Red teams and all that we do here, it's a really important month for us. For the first week of LCS this month, we will be wearing our CLG Red jerseys to show our appreciation for our CLG Red team. For all you people that follow LCS, you might not be aware, but the CLG Red rosters we have have legitimately been kicking ass for seven years. They've won multiple titles. Ms. Harvey is a really big part of this and is originally one of the members of our CSGO team when we first picked them up in 2015. She's been a really big part of CLG ever since and continues to be with us to this day, taking on numerous different initiatives all across diversity and inclusion all throughout CLG. I was actually here when CLG first picked up our CLG Red roster. I think I went to one of the first events that they played at at the Esports Arena, which was awesome. You know, I'm really excited and I'm very proud to be wearing this jersey and also Loki, it's pretty fire. I think it's better than, than the LCS one. Red Bull gives you wings. Who 
said you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Hmm? Huh?